Bayon with uh, class four of uh, ME401. Here is a two position synthesis with a rocker output. Um, so what we want to uh, uh, kind of imagine that we're doing here is we have these two um, positions. Like hypothetically here is uh, we, we want for some reason to have a part that like uh, um, results in a linkage being in this uh, uh, orientation at these two locations. Um, so we can uh, we can achieve that graphically by using a compass and uh, uh, establishing. Uh, or using using lines and establishing uh, um, uh, the relation. So what we do here, the process is to take and join C1 and C2. These are the two positions that the thing will uh, come to in between, and then we go to between these two right here. Now, what we'd like to do is draw a line that's through the center and perpendicular. That's the idea and a compass is a fine uh, tool to help us do that um, to not only bisect but uh, to find the in-between of the two so um, we don't want to make it stretch it out too far but actually that's not too bad right there it's just arbitrary length right in here and right in there that's going to be halfway now I might have uh, gone a little too big in this, yeah, right up here, and right up in there, right? So I can draw, if I could draw a line in between those two, I didn't have to draw it all the way up there, by the way, I kind of went a little overboard. Now I could do the same thing, um, I'm going to reduce my size here see and you might want to make these whoops <laughs> doesn't write with the pointy end and I come up to there I come here to the D right there and ooh barely got it in there now you draw a line that comes between those two Extend it down, and where this line, of course, remember that this line is passing through the center of this and perpendicular, and this line is passing through the center. Where those two meet, we're going to make a ground, right? And we're going to make a linkage right here. I like to draw one of them as bold and one of them as dashed. Okay, but this is going to be a ground, and we're going to label that as O4. Okay, now we're going to pick um, an arbitrary location. It's kind of nice to uh, to go horizontally uh, for us. If we wanted to do a quick return, we could have we could play around with this a little bit, um, but. Whoops, um, I'm going to pick, you want to pick a pretty good length. This length right here is going to be deciding how long the coupler is, or no, the rocker is, right? So um, I don't want to make it too short, but right here where these two intersect, right here and right here, right there, that's going to be, this is going to be now be the rocker. And it's very similar. Now, from now on out, we're, all we're going to do is add a dyad to this so that it will move between this at one extreme and this at the other extreme. So, um, based on our first example that we did, we'll draw a line straight through uh, to there. 
And now this length is up to us to choose, but we really should ch uh, check the Grashoff relationship afterwards. Um, and uh, so there is, I think there is some guidance as to, uh, in, in the book, as to how long or short that you can get to without having some Grashoff issues. Um, but uh, let's just say that I'm going to uh, arbitrarily pick it at like maybe, whoops, um, two and a half, something like that. So right here, it's where I'm going to pick my um, O2. I actually picked it shorter than my other thing. Hmm. It might, I might end up going too much over there. But anyway, that's going to be where O2 is. So here's my ground link. It's a good idea to post this. So my O2 is right here. Leave it a little off. There's my O2. And now, if you'll recall, I want to get uh, to um, get the midpoint of um, yeah, I want to, f to be able to find the crank length. I need the midpoint. But actually, um, is this true? I want to bisect this. I think this line accidentally looks bisected. I'm, I'm going to ask, I think, yeah, I think actually this line is actually bisecting these two right there. I might want to like double check on that. But uh, so um, what I'll do is I'll actually I'll move this thing up to here and double check that that line bisects. Oof, I don't know. It might be because of um, operator error here. But I think, I mean, according to this, that's the bisection right there. So I want th this distance to there to there to be my crank, right? So I find my crank distance. There we go. All right, so here is the crank extended right so um, and then here's the crank overlapped over to here right and I think we've I think they label these do they label these points as particular things I think uh, I think they do so I'll um, I'll look it up here in a second Right, so uh, I'll even draw this one out here just a little bit. Here's the the base of this. So there's what the mechanism looks like, uh, right in here, to be able to go from that position to this position. And I've already made this example in SolidWorks. Here is um, here's all those lines and everything. Let's uh, take a look at the motion study and check out uh, the mechanism. Let's watch it again. So it's going back and forth between those positions and it doesn't go beyond it. Um, yeah. Let's go to, uh, let's, uh, let's end this one right here. Let's end it.